Okay. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our seminar for today. We have the Student Research Committee with us, um, and we're gonna be talking about some undergraduate student research and going over the benefits, the best practices, any questions, and just having a discussion about student research. Um, and so a good way to start is that I think the members of the Student Research Committee could just quick introduce themselves and say hello. I'll go first since I'm on that committee too. So I am uh, Dr. Melissa Langston and I'm from the chemistry department. Cynthia, do you want to? Yeah, okay. I'm Cynthia Keller and I'm in the biology department. Jason Downs, also in biology. Hi, I'm Ruth Rubnik, just practicing with my camera. So. <laughs> You can see <laughs> math department. I, I just try to make some cameras to put my ha handwriting to be able. So I'm just practicing at the same time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I like it, Ruth. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Kim Johnston, uh, member uh, of the biology department as well. Uh huh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Red Hoyt. I'm with Animal Biotechnology and Conservation. Elise? Hi, I'm Elise Sturgillis. I am a librarian. <laughs> okay. Is that Elise, Elise is who you go to for all your research needs. Yes, yes, please. And so just a reminder, folks, uh, before I turn it over to Cynthia, um, just remind, remember to mute yourselves. We are going to record it and we'll get it. If you want to tell your friends about it, it'll be posted on the DelVal YouTube, hopefully later on today. Okay. So Cynthia, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Um, All right, um, so undergraduate student research is what we're gonna talk about today. And it's the members of the student research committee are here. And so we're here just to discuss student research and, um, and answer any questions that you have, right? I'm gonna switch to this mode, right? So we're gonna talk about the benefits of um, student research, but I have a quote here to start with from Jacques Monad, who was a famous French scientist during World War II. He was with the resistance, and he was the one who worked out the regulation of the lactose operon. And so he says, in science, self-satisfaction is death. It is the relentless anxiety, dissatisfaction, agony of the mind that nourishes science, right? So that's part of research, right? So you're always asking questions. It's always trying to find information out. So why even do student research or have undergraduate student research and or research project? Well, it is a lot of work, but there are many benefits to that um, doing student research. So just uh, some of the few are shown here, right? Um, so you have student engagement, students develop critical thinking skills, student ownership of their projects, right? So they are responsible for their own work. It develops their creativity, and there's numerous studies that show student involvement in student research increases retention, right? And we often think of the benefits for the students, and we don't often talk about the benefits for the, for the faculty, but um, faculty benefits certainly involve connecting your teaching and your research projects, getting students involved in that, keeping yourself um, engaged in research and interest so you can get you probably get some enjoyment and satisfaction out of that. I think everyone here can say that they enjoy students doing research and it is satisfying, I hope. You get improved relationships with students, so you build, um, they can be long-term relationships. So one of the first students I had, Mariah Beaver, I'm actually going to her wedding in August, hopefully, we'll see. Um, it's positive for tenure and promotion. 
And if you're a young faculty member, and you can certainly get publications out of this. And um, both students and faculty can present their research at meetings. So that's a benefit too, getting involved in whatever society um, you're associated with and going to those meetings and building connections through um, your research. And so this talk is really was geared towards the faculty, but we can um, relate it to the students also. So what, what really commitments do you need or what do you need to do student research? Well, you need yourself, right? First of all, and a commitment from yourself. Time, you have to make sure that you have enough time to be able to meet with the student, help them when they need it, especially if they're doing lab techniques for the first time, then you're gonna have to spend some time with them showing, how to, showing them how to do these. Um, commitment, right? You do have to be committed to meeting with the student on a regular basis and being on top of things. You have to be flexible because you might um, not be able to accommodate everything the way you want to. So you have to make confections and be flexible. You have to be confident that this is going to work out, right? And that it's a good thing. And you need some creativity, right? From the, from the student's um, side, as far as Del Val goes, if you're going to have a student do a student research project, um, there are some requirements. They need a minimum GPA of 2.7, sophomore status and above. However, we have had people who have freshman students, but the faculty who have had freshmen have identified their students as being able to, to um, do the work and keep up with the work. So. Um, you can be a freshman under approved circumstances, right? Um, all students have to have the approval of the supervising um, professor, so the mentor, the student's academic advisor, and the department chair of the supervising professor and the department chair of the student. So nobody is left in the dark, so everybody knows, the department chair knows that the students are doing these projects. Um, all students have to submit a proposal to the student research committee to be read. And I'll talk about proposal requirements in a little bit. Um, so you have to propose to the committee. So once we receive all the committees, the, propo the proposals go out to committee members and there's a rubric and they um, will read them, assess them, and if they pass the points needed for the rubric, then they're accepted. Students who don't get accepted have the opportunity for revisions of their proposal and fixing it um, and then resubmitting it to get approved. Okay? All this information can be found on the student research site um, at DelVal, at academics, undergraduate academics, and then student research. So students can register um, for one to three credits depending on the individual um, project and the hours plan to spend working on that project each week, right? And so the mentor really has to meet with the student before they write their proposal and decide and help the student decide how long they think it's gonna take the student to do this project. Um, so one credit would be 40, uh, 45 hours a semester, which is three hours a week. So that's not a very expensive project, right? A two credit project would be 90 hours a week, which would be six hours a week. And so for students that are in class full time, that's a significant time commitment. And then three credits would be nine hours or more a week. Um, and so that's a really significant project. Um, so the, the mentor, has a better idea of how long things are going to take. So they should meet with the student and plan that out ahead of time. And so once the students have decided on a particular um, research project that they want to do, again, the mentor needs to assess whether that project is doable at DelVal, right? And done safely at DelVal. But the 
students um, write the proposal, um, the proposal should include a title page with the proposal title, the student's name, and the mentor's name, a one to two page um, describing the proposed project and the rationale, the project timeline. So if they're going to start in September and go through December, how are they going to budget their time, right? So um, what are they going to do? Um, and it can be month to month or week to week. That's going to depend on the project. The students have to put together a budget. So the supplies that they're going to use and how much they're going to cost and maybe where they're going to get them from. Now, some supplies are, are at school already. So with the budget, there should be funding requests. So these would be supplies not covered by the department. So for example, a student working with me might need to make media, but we have a lot of trips to soy auger and we have a lot of petri dishes. So if they're not going to use them, then they don't need to to um, request funds to buy those, right? But that those should be included in the budget so the student understands all the equipment that they're gonna need to be able to do their experiment. And then of course, the last thing is references. They need references where um, they're, oh, I forget what we said, but they have to be current references. They can't, uh, you know, two of them at least have to be current references. Okay. Does anybody on the committee remember, help me out there, what we said in the rubric about the references? Greg and Gary are the ones who did the rubric. No? Yeah, I don't recall the... Okay. The, the, ru the, rubric, is on, the rubric is on the website, so you're, you can easily look there. And this is on the website and a sample proposal is on the website for you to look at also. And I right? believe it, isn't it three references from peer reviewed journals? Okay, but current too. I and was current. wondering what the year yeah. was, yeah. what we said the year was, but they do have to be current references. And as far as the mentor goes, there are some guidelines for faculty mentors, which are gonna help you um, be the best mentor that you could possibly be, right? So mentors should choose projects in their area of expertise. If a student comes to you, so for example, if a student came to me and they said they wanted to do something with mice, right? I would send them to Gary Fortier because I'm a microbiologist, so I don't work with forest animals at all, right? So make sure that you're comfortable mentoring projects in your area of expertise, right? Make sure that you work with the student to develop the proposal, review the proposal before they submit it to the student research committee. This just saves everybody time and effort. If a student submits a proposal that doesn't have references in it, then we need to send it back to the student and tell them to get references, right? Um, but if the mentor is reviewing it, then they'll realize that there's no references there. Right. Help the student decide on the time commitment, write the credits for the project, and also decide on how often you will meet with the student. Right. I would suggest um, that you meet with a student at least once a week and set up a time for a weekly meeting so that you guys can sit down and review the progress and um, how they're doing and what they plan to do, if they're having any trouble, um, things like that. Um, some faculty members require students to sign a, uh, I don't know what Greg calls it, a weekly sheet or a sheet saying they're going to meet weekly and commit to these hours and things like that. A contract, I guess. Um, if students are working with animals or human subjects, they have to fill out an IACUC form or a human subject form, right? And again, this information is on um, the website, but any animal use, even though you don't think it should be covered right now, the policy of DelVal is that you fill out an IACUC form, and they're available from either Chick Heist or Becky Hughes. Um, and the IRB forms, there's a web, uh, email there, IRB at DelVal. 
um, .edu, and they'll send you the appropriate forms that you need for a human subject, okay? And again, it's really important that the mentors check in with the students on students' work on a regular basis um, to help keep the students on track. If this is the first time doing it and they're at school first time and they have other commitments, they might let the research project slide. So you really have to um, encourage them if they're not um, up on coming, you know, doing the work weekly, you, you need to make sure that they continue, right? At the end of the semester, students are required to present their work both orally and with a poster. Um, so the mentor should re review the student's presentations material before they submit their final um, projects. Okay? And this is important too because, you know, the student is also representing you in a way and you want to make sure that the, everything that they present is correct and it looks nice and um, you go over their talk with them if they need you to, um, and so they're comfortable presenting. And then finally, the last thing, mentor, you should encourage your students to present at professional conferences, right? This is really important for students that are gonna be working in the field to be able to go to a professional conference and present their work, um, interact with other people, and build connections that they might keep for a long time, okay? And most, a lot of professional conferences have really student-friendly poster sessions. So they can just do a poster. They don't have to do an oral presentation, um, but they can uh, present their work. Okay. And that's it. Anybody have any comments or questions or anything specific? Anybody from the committee have anything they want to add? Hi, Tim. I'm going to stop you. Yeah. Okay, so I can see everybody. Yeah. Would you mind, uh, for the faculty mentors, would you mind talking a little bit about how many projects a faculty can mentor in a semester and what the compensation is for that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the compensation is one um, contact hour, no matter how many students you have, right? And I'm not sure what the compensation is now. Can somebody help me with that? Is it $800 a, a contact hour? Do you know? Anybody? That, that sounds about right. Um, yeah. But we can verify that. Okay. It's roughly. And um, it's out of load, right? So you have to have your full 12 contact hours and then do student research. You can't. Um, do student research in lieu of a contact hour, okay? And if you have three students, you're still only getting one credit, all right? The load, the, the number of students that you personally can supervise is something that you need to think about as a mentor. Some people are comfortable with one. I've had up to four or five students in a semester, Right, but I personally don't mind hanging out in the lab with them or spending time with them and doing that, so it doesn't bother me. Right, but other people might feel that it, that's an imposition on their time. But if they're all coming to the lab at the same time, then it's not um, it's not that hard to do. If they're doing one credit or two credit projects, it's, they're not um, really an extensive thing. But you need to decide because it is a time commitment and. Um, you need to think of ahead of time. There are some faculty that have, have done it once and said they won't do it again because it's too much time commitment. Yeah. I don't know if anybody can speak up on the committee how many students they've had and how they feel about it. Well, yeah, I, am I off mute here? Yeah, um, I have only ever done one at a time and, and it really comes down to what I can support in terms of uh, materials that I can loan out from the museum, space that I have for the students to work, and and also just um, the amount of like, you know, mental energy and time that I have to to commit um, to it. But I think the more students I have, the more divided I'd be between them because I'm also uh, someone who like I do. Uh, I'm a paleontologist. I I do fossil projects with students, so um, it 
it, it really couldn't, I couldn't really sort of combine them together to do one thing. I would end up having all these sort of individual projects to manage and it would make it a little bit uh, difficult. Um, but I also, I also think that um, along with sort of, you know, deciding which students to take and which to maybe suggest another semester to, I think um, one of the important things is really making sure the student is uh, like matched well with a project and with an advisor. So sometimes I'll have students that want to do a project with me just because they they like me or they enjoyed a class we had together, but it's not really in line, like the stuff that I do isn't really in line with their interests. And so I feel like a project with me wouldn't do as much for them as maybe a project with some other advisor that I could suggest. And I'll say that the best um, student researcher I ever had at Del Val was Allison Long, and I didn't know her before the project. She talked to you, Cynthia, and and then you directed her to me based on sort of her interest set. So I met her for the first time when we were having a conversation about doing a project together, and it was the best experience that I ever had. So I think it's, it's I, I've sort of learned from that that it's less about just taking a student who likes you and and you know wants to do a project with you if they if they have a specific set of interests there may be a better advisor for them so don't you know it's sort of like it's not a bad thing to to try to match them up with a better person right right there's plenty of students to go around right and and <laughs> and advisors you know i mean right. plenty of advisors. students and plenty of advisors right hmm. right and one of the one of the things that i want to mention when it comes to um, hours and credits for each student. You, you, you talked about the one credit, two credit, three credit, what that means for our commitment. And I had an experience where a student, I signed a student up for one credit uh, based on what I thought the project would be. And then partway through the semester, I realized that the student was putting a lot more into it and the project was becoming something much bigger than I had envisioned. Um, and mid semester, we were able to change that through the registrar so that he ended up with a three credit experience. So it can be a little bit tricky at the start of a semester to say, hey, no, I know exactly how this is going to go and what it's going to take and how many hours will be involved. But, but that shouldn't, you know, deter you because those kinds of things can be corrected after the fact. Right. Right. The registrar's office has been great if somebody applies and says, I've spent way more time on this than I thought I would. Can I have more credits, right? And that really hasn't been a problem, so. Mm -hmm. right. So I'll just share also, like uh, Jason, I've been very careful about um, the number of students that I take. Um, for me, the reason is that I, I am typically teaching you know, maximum number of contact hours, 18 to 20 sometimes. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, so, so trying to fold more than one or two students in there can be really challenging. So I've always limited myself to no more than two students in a semester. And really I prefer one, um, just so that I'm, I'm sure that I can give them the attention that they need and, and the project the attention that it needs. So I typically, Unlike you, Cynthia, I keep myself limited to one or two students in a semester. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I'm, I only have 12 contact hours usually each semester. So that gives me a lot more free time, right, than, than you do, right? That, that's what I'm saying. Each person has to really decide for themselves what they're capable of doing, right? Because you don't want it to be stressful. It's supposed to be a good thing, right? It's supposed right. to be fun and interesting and stimulating and um, you know it is a it is a way since really we are a teaching institution we're not a research institution so it is a way for you to still keep your mind active and be involved in research and have a little creativity um, and help mentor students starting off in their um, education if they want to work in a lab for microbiology or they want to work in the field like for reg right or somewhere so that they get those initial experiences they need to see if they like it or not you know i had a great student katie timco 
who um, did a research project because she wanted to go to vet school. She worked really hard on it, but she hated it, right? And I took her to conferences because she had a great project. And um, she said, I'm never doing research again. She got it to Ohio State and she's like, guess what I'm doing? I'm in the lab because I missed it. So <laughs> there you go. You never know what kind of impact you're gonna have on somebody. So it is, you know, being a mentor is really being a mentor. You help somebody with their career and their life and things like that. It's just not about the project, but it's about helping the students um, advance. You know, I guess that's the right thing for it. Um, hi everyone, what's, what's the best way for students to identify you know, who has research projects available or faculty that want to take on, have, I'm sorry if you, if you address that in your, in your presentation, but. I, I didn't, I didn't address that scene and we tried one time, I don't know, I think Melissa and Ewan were the only ones who went on it. There was some website where you could post and students could go and see what projects are available. Um, so that didn't work out really well. So the only thing I have is I send out an email to all the students and I post it on the um, DelVal, what, what, inside DelVal, right? And a lot of students come in contact with me and then they'll ask and I'll ask, what kind of project are you interested in? And, you know, I'll send them to whoever I think would have a good project for them. Or else other faculty um, will contact me and say, can the student do this project or things like that. I think part of being able to attract students is being able to um, promote it also in your classes and tell students that you're interested in having students do a student research project and give them some ideas. You know, in a couple weeks, right? I think on July 15th or something like that. I don't remember exactly. I'll talk about the lab that I developed for microbiology and part of the point of developing that lab was to have jumping off points for students who wanted to do student research. So that's another way um, to get it. Right. Cynthia, could, could you remind us um, what research does to satisfy the E360 requirements? Oh yeah, I didn't put that in there. I, you know, guys, I sent this PowerPoint out and said, is there anything I'm missing? <laughs> Oh, sorry. And now, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yes, EC3, it does satisfy. It's in, well, again, that's by department, but in the biology department, it's in both the A and the B group, right? And I don't know with different departments where it is, but it does satisfy E360 credits. So you can get E360 for students that way. Could, could as little as one credit satisfy one of the columns or is there like a threshold? I think it, one credit, but, but then you have to do the other column and make up the credits. You have to have like four credits or something, right? Yeah. If that part <laughs> can, it's like, it's like uh, the students know more about that than I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the, Kind of complicated because each department is different in what they require for their E360 requirements, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, for bio, biology department is in both A and B, but other departments it only might be in A or it only might be in B or something like that. So it, that's right. Students should find that out from their department. Mm -hmm. But it should be in every every department at one at one level, A or B or both. Yeah, it's a great way to satisfy it. Right, right, right. Does any of the students have questions, Caitlin or Madeline? I'm good for now. I had I think I got a pretty good idea on what is. Uh, undergraduate research is, research is now from your PowerPoint. I think I just need to like take in all that information now and okay. All right. Yeah, I agree because it's a lot almost. A okay. Maybe we could post this on the student research site too. Once the new website comes up. Yeah, we can definitely do that. 
And I think it's important for the students to realize like you don't have to go in with a project in mind. You can always pick at those faculty brains to see what ideas faculty have as well. Um, and then sometimes it's really neat that the two of you can get together and come up with a project that meets everybody's interests and create something from that. What, uh, one of the things that um, we've done in the past, I, I don't know how long it's been since we've done one, but we, we've had sort of these research opportunity nights where all um, potential advisors who have project ideas and slots open in the lab uh, would come and present those opportunities to an audience of students. Maybe that's something that we could do on Zoom at, at some point. Right. You know, maybe, maybe not in, you know, in time for this next deadline, which I think is in August, right? But, um, but it, you know, it might be a, a, a way to connect these ideas directly to students who are, you know, kind of in a position thinking like, hey, there's a lot of things that I would do. I just don't know what's possible right now. Yeah, I kind of hope that that's what would happen today, but I guess not that many people came. We could set up one for next week. There's lots of there's a spot available, right? And if ask mentors and students to attend or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yep. But certainly in the fall, um, maybe like in mid October, right? We can have put to get something together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I used to have people come from the biotech center, but I, I don't think that's going to be able to happen this year. Let's see. Anybody else have any? Well, hopefully we're at school for the whole semester so people will be able to have projects, right? Um, for the students who might be thinking about it, we extended the deadline for fall projects to be August 10th. So you have about a month, right? A little over a month to um, reach out to someone who you think could mentor your project and get in discussions with him and get the proposal together, which I think is plenty of time, right? And when you, if you write the proposal and you have to end up changing your project, you know, after it starts, that's okay too. That's happened to students before, right? Um, something doesn't work out or whatever. The only, problem is if you're using animals, right? And you have a specific IACUC protocol or a protocol that has been approved and you want to change that. Same with IRB, you have a protocol with humans and you want to change that, then you're going to have to get approval from those committees before you um, change your project. And you have to have approval before you can start your project also, right? Either with humans or with animals. Yeah, I, I had a quick question. Are there um, have there been instances where you have uh, more than one student working on a project, like two or three? There are. Um, I think the committee feels kind of to discourage that, but some projects, especially when they're working with the large animals, they need two students to be safe holding it or whatever or um, a, and then students can measure different things. So they had one with the lambs this past spring where someone was measuring the colostrum, someone was measuring the size of the lambs, and someone was measuring something else from the blood or something like that, right? So they all used the same cohort of sheep, but they all looked at something different. So if students are gonna share a project, then they should, um, you know, and for safety reasons, catching the lambs and the ewes and whatever. You need more than one person. You can't do that yourself, right? So if you have um, two people working on a project, they really need to have, you know, two different aspects of the project, right? The materials, um, right? Because just to have two people because they want to work together, right? It's not, you know, most of the projects aren't that extensive, so it doesn't require you know, hours and hours and hours and hours of work, right? Any 
anybody else? Anything? No. All right. Well, then thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, like Dr. Keller said, we do have another seminar coming up on July 16th at three, where she's going to talk about her um, work in the lab. And so thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. And I'm going to end our recording. <laughs>